All right, welcome to the Lone Star Conference Media Day for the 2021-2022 fall season. I'm here with the head coach of the Angel State men's basketball team, Coach Cinco Boom. Coach, first of all, great to have you on the show and I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Connor, it's good to meet you uh, for the first time and to visit with you about our, our team and our outlook for our season. So thanks for having us. Of course, and I want to take it back a couple steps to look at last season. Last season, it, you know, it's been a struggle, you know, dealing with the pandemic, trying to overcome that, rescheduling games and everything like that. When you look back at last season, what are some of the lessons that you've taken away personally as a coach and what the team you think has taken away from that experience? Well, number one, it's a great achievement just to survive it. You know, I mean, it, it was, uh, no, there's no doubt about it. It was the weirdest year starting in recruiting uh, to the testing to, you know, the, the COVID testing at 7 a.m. three times a week. Uh, to practice, guys being in, guys being out, um, you know, and then playing back-to-back -back days and games, and uh, it, by far just the m most unorthodox year that, that you just had to basically hang on and survive and do the best you could, and, and uh, I'm really proud of what our team did last year to be able to uh, start off the year basically one in three at Christmas time, uh, which is an unusual position for us to be in, and to come back and, and to finish fifth um, and to make it into the conference tournament uh, during a year that was very odd. Uh, we, we were happy with what we accomplished and, you know, especially the, the two previous years to that, we had had NCAA uh, tournament berth teams. Um, and so last year we didn't get our, to our goal, but to survive it, uh, thankful and proud of what our group did. Yeah, and as you move into this season, I know the last part of that answer you gave me that you talked about goals for this team. And what are some of the goals that you have and expectations for this team heading into this season? You know, we, we always strive to put together a schedule and, and a roster that's going to put us in the NCAA tournament every year. Um, I, I truly believe that if you get uh, a good non-conference schedule of in-region games, um, and then you play obviously the gauntlet of the Lone Star Conference, um, then you're trying to set yourself up to, if you don't win the Lone Star Conference tournament and get the automatic bid, um, that you're vying for one of those six at-large bursts uh, to the NCAA tournament. And so every year, that's a topic of conversation that we have with our team. Uh, we tell them that the, the first two games of the season, uh, November 13th and 14th against Fort Lewis College and New Mexico Highlands in region games, those are just as important when you're playing UT Permian Basin or Lubbock Christian in February uh, because they're games that mean a lot to get into the NCAA tournament. And not only that, you mentioned in the earlier talking about the new recruits that you have coming to this campus and joining the team, a lot of additions as well as the returning players, but can you talk about some of the new additions that you've made to this roster? Because I believe I think it's eight that have joined this team. Sure, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how many, eight probably sounds about right. Um, you know, for, with our new additions, um, you know, some guys that we're excited about and we, we kind of recruit all over. We'll get, you know, levels uh, or high school kids, uh, different levels and then junior college players and then four year transfers. But, you know, I think uh, when you look at Keelan Penny and you look at Tyrell Carroll that are coming from, uh, you know, really good division two conferences and institutions, we're excited about th those guys. When you look at Freddie De La Cruz coming from UT Arlington, um, if you reference Andreas Abaru and from our team in 1920, he came from uh, UT Arlington and had a terrific season for us. And so we're kind of comparing uh, Freddie to uh, Andreas in, in that way. And then when you get Dante Moses coming from Radford University, who, who was a very productive player also in junior college, then you look at Taney Bastion, you know, who, coming from Trinity Valley Junior College, who made the national tournament. Um, and uh, in last season, and then you look at uh, uh, Chris Boykhurst, who 6'9", incoming freshman, uh, maybe one of the most uh, talented potential players that we have that, that's going to have four years with us. Um, you know, we could go in depth on each one of those guys, but um, I just want to highlight those guys and, and we're excited about them. Yeah, and I guess the one thing that we actually just found out before we did this interview was the preseason rankings have just kind of moved back to basketball um, and that you guys play seventh. And obviously it's preseason rankings. Um, you don't know how each team's going to look. It's just, just kind of the media having their opinion. So when you kind of found that out, what's just kind of your initial impressions of that? You know, I think with um, this season, with all the rule changes, I mean, when, when you have, uh, you know, the, the pandemic gave everybody an extra year of eligibility. 
uh, the transfer portal the way that it is and, and players leaving the conference, I mean, it's hard to really predict uh, a preseason poll. And so I think it's great for college basketball that we have preseason polls and there's excitement to know where you're going to finish and predict where it's at. But we all know we're vying for what's going to happen at the end and where we're going to land, not where, we're, where we start. Um, but um, I think seventh place is fair when you look at where we were last year. Um, when you look at the returning teams, the returning players that are coming back, for example, Lovett Christian to have every starter returning off of their championship team last year, they're going to get picked first, there's no doubt, and they've earned that. Um, and so then the other teams that went to the NCAA tournament that have good, good players returning, they're going to get uh, highly picked. And so I think we're, we're in a good spot where we got some, uh, I guess you could say some attention in the middle of the pack, but it gives our guys a goal to shoot for to try to prove people wrong. And last question for you, Coach. Less than a month away from when you play your first game of the season, as you look towards that and some of the goals that you probably would want your team to get to that point as you kind of practice and get things together, what's the feeling like when it's getting this close to the start of basketball season and what it means to you as a coach, but also for these players when they're getting ready for another season after everything that this team has gone through last season to be able to have another opportunity to kind of clean slate, clean, a clean slate this season? Uh, without a doubt, it's just excitement. You know, whenever you get a chance to, to, to look at maybe possibly, you know, the full stands being full or, you know, I mean, the, the COVID restrictions hopefully not being in the way for us to have fans in the stands and to kind of resume hopefully back to as, as close to normal as what we were. Um, as we watch the fall sports go and as we basically beat up on, on ourselves day after day after day in a preseason, when you get closer to getting to play somebody else and to, you know, take all your hard work and dedication and go challenge it against somebody else, it's just excitement. There's really no other way to word it. Well, Coach, we're looking forward to another season. Best of luck to you and your team this season. Uh, we're looking forward to see what happens. I appreciate it, man. I think, Coach, appreciate it. And that is going to conclude the Lone Star Conference Media Day with head coach uh, Cinco Boone. So, Paul, obviously, thank you again for joining the show. Uh, one of the things I kind of want to talk about when we talked with Coach earlier about this and was about you know dealing with the pandemic last season and it was very difficult on everyone on the team and as you look at you know not only yourself but as a team what do you think you learned from that experience um just having to be like more disciplined like waking up every day knowing that you got to possibly get picked to you know uh get a covid test or things of that nature just like throw you off from your regular day-to-day -day, you know um things you go through every day so yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge for me. And then when you kind of look at going into this season, transitioning there, you have a lot of returning players coming back as well, as long as new additions to the team. Can you kind of talk about some of the players that you're returning with and also some of the new additions that are coming onto the team? Uh, yeah, we got uh, Kendrick Washington. He's been having a real good offseason for us. Um, another returner, Devon Thomas, he was a... Um, honorable mention for the all-conference team last year. He's a really good player for us last year. Um, and Andre Nunley, he was a, a real good spark off the bench for us towards the end of the season last year. So we're looking forward to playing with them again this year. And as you look at your team this year heading into the season, though, as I mentioned, the returning players as well as the new additions to the team as you know, less than a month away from the first game of the season, just what are your feelings? I know Coach said he was very excited about the season and getting ready, but just how do you feel entering the season? What's the vibe? What's the just feeling heading into it? Um, I'm real excited about this season, you know, um, getting to play with my newer teammates. We got um, uh, Dante Moses. We got Tanny. Uh, we got um, Fred, Fredolin. Um, they're coming off some injuries, so they're getting right with the uh, injuries, the ACL injuries and stuff like that. So they're going to be moving in towards the end of the, I mean, the first part of the season. It's going to take them a little minute to get back right, but we're looking forward to playing with them as well. And when you think about 
you know, all the work that a lot of players put in the off season, and most people that, like myself, even in media, we don't realize what the sacrifices that you guys have to make in order to be ready for that game one. And especially for yourself, when you look at what you've done the off season, um, what are some goals that you had for yourself during this off, se off season for you to like, improve and get better as you head into the season? Um, for me, probably uh, my, my communication with my teammates probably get that better. But uh, yeah, as a point guard, I know I have to you know have a voice on the team. So I'm just looking forward to you know playing with those guys uh, and improving in those areas of myself this year so and you've been around here for some time too in St. Angelo and one of the biggest things about being here is a community um, when you've the time you've been here can you kind of talk about not only just how it's been for you on the court but also off court just enjoying life here at St. Angelo yeah ever since I got here it's been a family vibe that's probably the main reason why I chose to come to Angelo because it was ever since I came on campus it was just constant love you know uh, uh, I want to give a shout out to Alex and Kay DeCure. Ever since I got here, you know, they uh, they had open arms with me uh, ever since I've been here. And they come to every practice for us, so I really appreciate them. Well, Paul, I think everyone's really excited about this season, and everyone's looking forward to seeing what's going to happen on the court. But we do appreciate your time for joining us, and thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. And that is going to wrap things up for Lone Star Conference Online Media Day here with Paul Williams.